Good afternoon and today we're going to deal with quite a serious subject, food shortages in the New World Order and how to just side slip them. Uh, what a grey, grey day it is. I'm sure you can relate and let's have some trumpet, a little fanfare to, you know, uh, warm up proceedings as it were. to wherever you go to get your um your beef your lamb or your pork which you're going to roast and you're going to present to your guests okay and um lo and behold there's a new world order meat shortage there's no pork no lamb no beef so what do we do and the important thing here is to be prepared and come into this with the sort of insouciance which says, oh, so fecking what? You can't phase me out with your pathetic little New World Order food shortages. So what I want to suggest is a nice rump back end, you know, um, quality horse joint. And so today, as a stand in for my horse joint, which I haven't actually procured, um, we're going to do the whole thing with a substitute but just use your imagination and pretend that this is indeed um, a a horse roast joint it's actually a triple layer fairly sizable chocolate cake but i'm sure you can use your imagination take your carving knife and carve a good you know section off for each guest there we go it's a little yellow perhaps you know the fattiness of it but um nothing to be despised and after all you know uh waste not want not and um, beggars can't be choosers and all that kind of thing and i think you're going to find that this joint is incredibly pleasing and by the time i've tarted it up in a bit as you see it's going to work as well you know as any other sirloin or anything else you like so there you are there's our lovely bit of not very well Hmm, hang on, let me just sort this out a bit. We'll slice it. There you are, lovely, lovely joint of horse flesh there. And um, there's plenty left for the other guests, obviously. Now, today what we're going to do to start with, to make it terribly, terribly appetising, we're going to add gravy. And today's gravy is ambrosia chocolate devon custard. We just slop a little bit, you know, round around the surround as it were of the um there you are. it looks a little bit like horse dollop doesn't it and then what we're going to do is we're going to tart it up with some bread sauce so today's bread sauce is some french thing called um creme froche but just imagine for a moment that this is a nice hearty dollop of bread sauce there we are i do like a bit of bread sauce so i'm going to go for a second dollop just put that around there excellent okay that's the bread sauce and then we're going to just cover the horse flesh as it were with a really beautiful double cream and white wine sauce which i've pre-prepared it's actually a um, double cream and of course if you do go to tesco's which you shouldn't you'll find that you can either buy this double cream for 105 or the one that says Tesco's for 135 and they are in fact the same that's just a useful little life hack there this is the double cream of the double cream and white wine sauce but I've separated them as it were quite clever really but um, there we are so we just dribble that over there you can see already this horse flesh although you're not accustomed to it and the fat is rather yellow is in fact going to become incredibly delicious in the next few moments and um, we'll just slap a couple of roasties on there. There we are. Actually, millionaire, you know, doodahs. Um, and, of course, we'll need some carrots with that. So let me just pop a few carrots on. It's rather outsized um, blueberries, in fact. Beautiful. There we are. We'll pop one on there for artistic effect and a couple on the top. So those are your carrots and, indeed, leeks if you want all very delicious with horse flesh and um well now let's open some wine that looks pretty good oh crushed black pepper we need crushed black pepper 
nothing quite like it is there so we'll pop these uh, sugar stars which are substituting for our crushed black pepper and there you are you can see beautiful horse rump with gravy and bread sauce um leeks carrots crushed black pepper white wine and cream sauce and um, bread sauce marvelous and um you'll need a a fork to eat it this you know some people call these cake forks but of course they are in fact horse flesh forks as proven there so today's first choice of wine is the elephant in the room voluminous voluptuous viognier and the reason why it's so well such an elephant you know is that it you're not going to believe me but i am telling the truth it's it's from australia and it's 14 and a half percent now if that doesn't get your gangloins um gangling i just don't know what so 14 and a half percent viognier did you ever that is absolutely perfect let me tell you with horse flesh and look at that i mean it is absolutely you know satellite platinum all of this is in you know great stead for totally destroying the sort of naysaying negativity of the new world order which is all just illusion and fliff flap isn't it really oh my gosh that is absolutely marvellous. It's like mouthfuls of fresh hay and meadow flowers. Bucketfuls of straw and, you know, a little, oh, almost oats in there. Oats and bran. I can't tell you how incredibly delicious that is. And thank goodness I'm not sharing it with anyone now. What I always think is, you know, to really, because this is a decent roast, isn't it? It's pretty decent. So let's open, if you will, the champagne. Now, this isn't just any old champagne. This is a really top, top one. It's Landrick champagne. Because, you know, when I'm defeating the New World Order, I do like to go all out um, to, well, defeat the New World Order, you know. And um, the champagne is important. Indeed, it's quite possibly more important than the meal, I think. But... Of course, some people are going to disagree with me. And um, let's get this show on the road. I'm really handy with these things. Right. Uh, well, there. <laughs> well, you can't go wrong, can you? <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so what we really need here is a decent bit of patter. But uh, we don't have one. Now, never, never, never point these at anyone. Where are you? <laughs> let's see. Ooh! Okay, so that um, is how to very professionally open Landrick Champagne. And we're looking here at uh, 12% um, and it's an elegant blend of, do you see that smoke coming out the end of the bottle there? Oh, I love that, don't you? Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier, Chardonnay. And would you believe it, it comes from France. Now, get your everyday average sort of... Um, champagne flute as it were or indeed trumpet if you don't like the flute and um, see what you can throw in the glass let's see mm, marvellous marvellous nose as you would expect only from the priciest of champagnes now I know I realise that you sort of more what can I say common plebs aren't going to be able to afford a big you know all out blow like this but um absolutely magnificent busy elegant bubbles just like a waterfall in reverse fantastic i could spend all afternoon watching those and indeed i will my gosh well whew. that's uh all the traditional method of, um, you know, bubbles in good stead there. I've gone straight up my nose. Do you remember those COVID things people used to put up their noses? How amusing. I used to think, my gosh, I'm so glad I'm not part of the world order. Never mind the new world order. <laughs> dear, dear me. But never mind, because you know what it is. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. And if you haven't got any cider, champagne will do. A, a bottle of champagne a day and you're going to be as right as anyone. I have to 
say, and this really is incredibly glorious. I mean, look at me, all this horse flesh, the elephant in the room, and the um, Landrick champagne. I think I'm pretty well suited here. Pretty stable condition, as it were. <laughs> there we go, look at that elephant. And somebody, you know, you can see it's a room because there's a dining table there with a um, cloth on it, just like mine, of course. And um, of course, you don't get those outdoors. And then if your guests are, you know, sort of not sure what else to do, you might like to try them on the Spanish brandy. And I highly recommend using these chubby little dumpy glasses, which I do think are incredibly cute. And you could get a decent amount of brandy in those. So there you are. Horse flesh, roast potatoes, all the thing, you know, gravy, a whole lot. And um, some nice wines and a bit of brandy to go with it. Nice, eh? I once had a trombone and you played a high E and all the glasses on the top of the dresser used to dance together. Marvellous it was. My neighbours had a few things to say about it as well. Oh, this is the this is the life. Oh, you know, bring the new world order on. I mean, I haven't even got into the world order, like I say. And, and order isn't really a thing that ever takes place in my life, I have to admit. Um, and, uh, well, you know, looks like a mushroom, doesn't it? I really, I ought to have a really fantastic, um, you know, like punchline to finish this off. But uh, there you are. That's what I'm going to be doing this afternoon in between playing chess and the piano. Not both at the same time, of course. Uh, there you go. Champagne bucket purloined from um, Charingworth Manor in the Cotswolds. <laughs> and this is Kent. So welcome to glorious Grey Kent. And what to do about food shortages in the new world order just substitute something else you know if you can't find cow try horse or if you can't find lamb there's always you know elephant and if you're short on kentish sparkling wine of course there's always the top brand uh champagne so thank you very much for looking in and you know a bit of spanish brandy later on perhaps and um well I, I feel that so so privileged to have friends like you, you know, um, so that I can just, you know, I mean, well, I mean, I have a decent spread like this and you're not even here, are you, dear, dear me? Never mind. I'll make great inroads for you, I promise. I will enjoy your favourite um, everything and, uh, well, there you go. It's fantastic. Look at that. I mean, honestly, the, you know, what I want to say is who cares about the New World Order? It's not as bad as it was in the war, you know. In the war, my mother lived out in rural Suffolk and one day the butcher rode up from Suffolk and said, here's your joint, love. And uh, her mother said, that's no, that's no beef joint, that's horse meat, that is. You can take that back. So the poor boy had to cycle all the way back to Suffolk, uh, Sudbury in Suffolk, I should say, and uh, he came out again. Poor lad, it's, it's a fair tidy step from Sudbury to Borley. Borley's the place of the haunted rectory, you know, uh, where my mother spent the war in Perkins Farmhouse and, you know, fresh eggs and all that sort of thing and a bit of mud. Never did anyone any harm. And so she got the beef joint and no doubt the butcher had to put up with the horse. But as you can see, there's nothing wrong with horse. I mean, it's, well, I mean, you could shout yourself, couldn't you? Good afternoon. <laughs> 